It is 9 p.m. news here on GTTV coming to you live from our studio in Westville, and I am Mudlam and Job. We begin with the main headlines. The Ministry of Health of the Gambia, Dr. Ahmed Lamin Samate, has received health equipment worth over $37 million from World Health Organization country representative to strengthen Gambia's health system. Serekunda market petty traders lamented government's ban on plastic bags as it terribly backfired on their businesses. The National Youth Parliament has commemorated the International Youth Day at the National Youth Parliament head office in Carnivine. A wooden fishing boat has been found 300 kilometers from the Atlantic Island nation of Cape Verde, a month after it set off from Senegal with more than 100 migrants on board. In the internationals, military heads of ECOWAS are holding a two-day meeting in Accra for possibly military intervention in Niger. The meeting seeks to bring back democratic rule in the country. Well, this and many more interesting stories will follow shortly after the short break. Welcome back. This is GTTV News in English with me, Mudlam Njob. On Wednesday, 16 August 2023, the Gambia's Health Minister, Ahmed Lamin Samadeh, received health equipment from WHO country rep to help strengthen the country's health system. The materials are worth over $37 million. Our reporter tells us more on the story. The health organization WHO country representative in the Gambia has on Wednesday, 16 August 2023, handed over supplies worth over $37 million to, to the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Lamin Samate, to strengthen Gambia's health system. The donated supplies were an array of resources that spans from cutting-edge computers and PC tablets designed to perform the surveillance system and data management to indispensable laboratory consumables and advanced equipment that will foster an environment of medical excellence. The donated supplies include two pediatric hemodialysis machines with portable reverse osmosis dialysis water treatment plant, 93 laptop computers with accessories, 78,000 bottles of paracetamol syrup, one laboratory equipment with consumable reagent cretine assay kit, 153 tablets, patient, nine patient monitors, and five ventilators, including five oxygen concentrators. In receiving these supplies, the Honorable Minister highlighted the significant role of WHO in strengthening the healthcare system of the Gambia, and assured them that the supplies will provide support to the ministry to strengthen the country's health system and improve access to quality and affordable health services to the people of the Gambia. Reporting for GTV News, I am Mudlam Job. Small-scale business owners, including vegetable sellers within Sarakunda, have been expressing concern about the ban on plastic bags to have slowed the growth of their business. They say that they have no item now to put their sold goods for the buyers. Our reporter Adam Abba has been speaking to vendors and now files in her report. It comes from a ban on the plastic bag which was passed into law on the 1st July 2015 in the country to provide the use and importation of the plastic bags in the country. However, despite the ban, National Environment Agency, a body tax set, which is responsibility of enforcing the law against the use and importation of the plastic bag, is struggling to stop the importation and use of the plastic bags in the country. But the agency now reform the enforcement on the ban and government to prosecute anyone, anyone found culpable. But how is the ban impacting business in the country? Well, this is Fatumbe, a tomato vendor, hard to see. We are facing the same problem. Because I sell tomatoes and you cannot sell it without putting in a plastic bag. I used to sell two baskets a day, but now I can sell a single basket because of the bag. Customers go away if I tell them I don't have plastic bag to put the tomato for them. Because if I use plastic bags, I will get arrested and charged. We are really suffering due to the ban. Meanwhile, Omar Samba, also a vendor, said that the ban has caused so much of problems on their businesses adding that if they ban this plastic, where can we put our sugars and salt? We are selling. It is very hard for us. Even where do put our goods is now a problem. And you must put some goods in a plastic bag. But now, if you don't have plastic bags, you will be forced to stop trading those goods. Because goods like sugar and ice blocks require to be in a plastic bag. But they plant plastic bags. You cannot trade these goods. Father Juve, Gamian Talents TV. 
On 30th August 2023, the National Youth Parliament has commemorated the International Youth Day at their head office in Kaniting. The chosen team for this year's celebration was Green Skills for Youth Towards a Sustainable World. Aisha Tukoli tells us more on that story. The National Youth Parliament commemorates International Youth Day at the National Youth Parliament head office in Kaniting. The theme for this year's celebration is Green Skills for youth towards a sustainable world which aim in promoting development in sustainable green jobs through training on organic fertilizer and coastal tree planting to address climate change. Speaking at the celebration, the UNDP country representative, Isata Day, outlined the importance of the theme for this year's celebration and described it as timely, adding that climate change possesses challenges to the Gambian development aspirations and it's only through the young people the country can tackle those challenges. Uh, poses profound challenges to the Gambian development aspiration. It's only through you, the next generation, that we, the country will be able to, to, to be equipped and to face those challenges. The, this year thematic uh, of green skills for youth embodies a transformative vision and uh, by equipping you uh, and the, new, the young generation with green skills, we are nurturing catalysts, catalysts for positive change and sustainable growth. The potential you have and as youth in bonding, in blondings, and when armed with right uh, skills, you can drive for, uh, behind uh, further this uh, socioeconomic aspiration. Degen Job. Deputy Speaker of the National Youth Parliament underscores the importance of this year's celebration. We gather under the banner of the International Day, International Youth Day. Our hearts resonate with shared commitment to a cause that transcends generations and bridges the divide between present and posterity. The theme that unites us green skills for youth towards a sustainable world is not merely a collection of words. It's not merely a collection of words. It's a call to action, a clarion call that reverberates through time. In this era of unprecedented environmental challenges, the mantle of leadership falls heavily upon our soldiers. The youth, with our energy, our ideas, our relentless pursuit of a better world must become the vanguards of change. CS commemoration, which starts from the 12th to the 14th, will involve various activities by the participants, such as comprehensive training on manufacturing organic fertilizer led by experts and other tree planting exercise. The United Nations General Assembly declared August 12th as International Youth Day in year 1999, ever since it has been used to create awareness and addressing challenges faced by the youth and looking for ways of overcoming them but also highlight the achievements of young people across the globe. Aisa Tukoli, Gambian Talents TV News. The President of the Republic of the Gambia, His Excellency President Adam Abaro, has on Thursday, 17th August 2023, sent a message of condolences to the Inspector General of the Gambia Police Force, Abdullah Sanyang, on the demise of his beloved wife, Jose Trame, who passed away on Wednesday. In his Facebook post, President Baro said, my sincere condolences to the Inspector General of Police, Abdullah Sanyang, on the demise of his wife, Usay Trame. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her soul in China. The message concludes. Now in sports, Gambian striker Asan Sisi has joined Saudi Pro League side, Damak FC, for a fee of 2.6 million euros. Asan Sisi, who is fondly known as Torres, moved from his Italian side, U.S. Lacey will see him stay with the Saudi Pro League side for three years. Damak FC finished eight positions out of 16 teams in the Saudi Pro League in 2020 through the 2023 season. The lethal striker who sits on top of the Gambia senior male national team's leading goal scorer chart of all time has also scored the most important goal in the nation's history as he scored the fastest brace in Afghan qualifiers history against Angola. Congratulations to Asset and good luck to him and his team. His move to Saudi will see him play against the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Sadio Mane, Neymar Jr., Benzema and Golo Kante, all whom are exceptional football players in the world. 
He also led FC Zurich to its first league title in 14 years with 20 goals and 10 assists. Now in the internationals, 60 out of 100 migrants have been found near the Atlantic island nation of Cape Verde following a month from their departure from Senegal. BBC News Africa reports that it is not known what happened to the missing ones. Serif Conte reads the rest of the story from BBC News Africa. More than 60 mostly Senegalese people have feared that after their boat was found drifting about 300 kilometers from the Atlantic island nation of Cape Verde. Seven out of 38 survivors are receiving treatment in hospital. Their wooden fishing boat was found a month after it set off from Senegal with more than 100 migrants on board. It is not known what happened to those missing. Officials in Senegal said they were making arrangements to bring survivors home. Cape Verde officials have called global action on migration to help prevent for the loss of life. It is thought the vessel was aiming for the Spanish Canary Island, a frequent migrant gateway to European Union. It was first spotted on Monday by a Spanish fishing board. The survivors, including four children aged 12 and 16, a spokesperson for the International Organization for Migration said, Serif Conte, GTTV News. Still in the internationals, as part of its efforts to bring back democratic rule to Niger, military chiefs across West Africa Regional Bloc on Thursday, 17th August and Friday, 18th August 2023, hold a meeting in the capital city of Ghana, Accra, to deploy a standby force for possible military intervention in Niger. Several meetings have been held by ECOWAS since the toppling of the country's democratically elected president, Mohamed Bazoum. I shall equally read the rest of the story from BBC News Africa. Military chiefs from West African regional bloc ECOWAS are meeting to discuss the deployment of standby force for possible military intervention to restore democracy in Niger. The gathering is taking place on Thursday and Friday in Ghanaian's capital, Accra. At least 11 of the bloc's 15 member states back a military deployment to reinstate the democratically elected president, Mohamed Bazoum. After diplomatic efforts failed to yield any positive result, both three ECOWAS members currently on the military route themselves, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea, support the junta. Niger's school leaders have warned they will defend themselves against any military intervention. The discussion in Accra will focus on the resources, the number of troops needed, and a standard operating procedure for combat troops. Ghana and Nigeria have led previous interventions under the umbrella of ECOWAS, Ceasefire, Monetary Group, ECOMOC in Liberia and Salerion in the 1990s. The bloc has also intervened in other member countries and more recently in the Gambia. The meeting comes amid a worrisome security situation in Nigeria. On Tuesday, 17 soldiers were killed and 20 injured in an ambush by Islamic militants. I said to Koli, Gambian Talent TV News. Well, that's all we have for tonight's news bulletin. But before we take a leave of you all, here is a recap of our main stories. The Ministry of Health of the Gambia, Dr. Ahmed Lamin Samate, has received health equipment worth over $37 million from World Health Organization country representative to strengthen Gambia's health system. Serekunda market petty traders lamented government's ban on plastic bags as it struggled backfired on their businesses. The National Youth Parliament has commemorated the International Youth Day at the National Youth Parliament head office in Carnivine. A wooden fishing boat has been found 300 kilometers from the Atlantic Island nation of Cape Verde, a month after it set off from Senegal with more than 100 migrants on board. In the internationals, Military heads of ECOWAS are holding a two-day meeting in Accra for possibly military intervention in Niger. The meeting seeks to bring back democratic rule in the country. Well, that's all we have for you in tonight's news bulletin. And thank you for your company. I was your presenter on behalf of the production team. Bye-bye until I come your way next Friday. Stay tuned and keep watching the rest of our interesting programs. Have a blissful weekend ahead. Bye-bye.